Hi again, and welcome back to Top Solid 7. In this next video, we're going to take a look at some of the simulation tools available with Top Solid Cam. First of all, I just activated the machine again so that we can see the full machine. The first level of simulation you have is you can simulate either just the tool or the tool with the machine. So we can switch here to be with the machine, hit play, and again, you get to see everything moving in real time, which is really, really cool. Now, the next level of simulation you have is what we call verification. So, for example, I could take all operations, and I'll just do it through the tab here, and click verify, and now see that it loads the machine. But, uh-oh, it's not loading my fixture, and, silly me, that's because I forgot to tell verify that it existed. So, what I need to do is go into the entities tree, go to the mechanism folder, go to our groups folder, and I'm just going to click on groups here until my plate highlights. There it is, it's in group 17, and I was using my up and down arrow keys, by the way. I'm going to expand that, I'm going to expand table, and I'm just going to drag and drop this to be part of the table. And all I'm doing is telling Top Solid that this fixture plate is part of the kinematic of the table. So wherever the table goes, the fixture plate follows. So now if we go back into verify, we're going to see everything again. But this time, we see it with material removal. And of course, we can speed this up, we can slow it down. It's entirely up to you. Now... On top of that, we can activate collision detection. And with collision detection, it's going to warn us if the tool collides with something it shouldn't. So that's kind of cool. But now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather not have to sit here and wait for the whole simulation to run. So what I'm going to do is rewind to the beginning, make sure collision is active, and I'm going to turn off the machine sim. So now we're just in a static simulation, and now I have a turbo mode. And if I run turbo mode, it means it's going to run in the background until it's done. And then it's going to report back to us the finished verified models, as well as any collisions that happened. That's kind of cool. So now it just ran. I don't know if you saw the bar across the bottom. And in a second, the graphics will catch up with it. And here, I see some red. If we rotate this around, I see some red here and here as well. Huh, that's strange. I wonder what that means. If we go up here to this button, Display Clashes, well, check this out. This creates a nice list of all of the collisions and what it collided with. This collided with the tool holder and fixture. This is here, and it's showing you what the collidable object is. Now, what can you do with this information? So now I'm going to quit out of here and go back to programming, but thinking to myself, wouldn't it be really awesome if the software had a way of reporting all of those collisions back to us. And as a matter of fact, it does. If I go to my options here, I can turn on my verified option. I can turn on my clashes option. I can turn on any of these other options. But if we just look at the first two, so the green check mark means it's been verified. The red bubble means that incidents were detected during verification. So let's go ahead and simulate from here with collision detection turned on. So we're going to go ahead and hit go. And right here, let's see where the collision happens. I'll bet you it's the holder. There it is. You see it? So our tool just isn't sticking out far enough for this. So how do we fix that? Well, we start by going to this tool. Actually, we can do it right on this tool path. And we can go down to minimum tool length. And let's say we want to maintain 100 thousandths around everything. We use clamp clearance as well of 100 thousandths. And we'll hit calculate. And now it's going to put the tool down at the deepest point, And it's going to adjust the stick out length automatically. Like that, I can hit my green check mark. Yes, now all the tool path needs to regenerate. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it because I've just changed the stick out length of the tool. And then we can go and rerun the verification and find out that all of those collisions have been taken into account. Cool, so I've done that update. Let's hit save. And now let's go back to verify. We have collision analysis turned on. We want to run in turbo mode. Let's let it do its thing. And again, the whole thing I'm trying to show you here is that you have really, really simple to use and powerful tools 
to verify that your setups are accurate based on everything that we've done in this manufacturing process. So the verification is nearly done. We should get the graphical update in a few seconds here. And let's see if there's any other collisions. And it seems there's still some collisions. But there's also fewer, which is cool. So now let's go ahead and quit out of here. We'll go back into the world of CAM and we'll continue. And I'll show you one more quick sample. So for example, this facing somehow has a collision. Well, let's have a look. If I go to simulate, boom, there it was. Did you see it? Let's rewind it back to the beginning. We'll stop. We'll turn the simulation speed way down and we'll hit play. So this tool is starting from where it left off on the last operation and it's rapiding over to here and that's where the collision is happening. So really what's happening is in the previous operation, I didn't set my final Z altitude high enough to avoid collisions. So let's go to the previous operation. Let's go to our settings and let's change that. So we're going to go here to our altitudes and in the altitudes, I have a final altitude and I'm going to set it to a value. And my value is simply going to be two inches. And I can see it right there. That's now above everything. That's perfect. If you want to be really safe, let's make it three inches. That's fine. Now I'm going to copy that value and green check mark. Now, why did I copy that value in green check mark? Because now I can go to all of these, I can right click, and we can paste that new value. I'm going to go to parameters copy, and I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to regenerate. And what that's going to do is that's going to change the final Z altitude of all operations to be three inches. Pretty cool. I'm copying a common parameter from one toolpath to all other toolpaths. So we should be able to really quickly check to see if this worked. If we go here and activate that, boom, you see the movement up here at three inches. If we activate this one, we should see it there as well. Cool. And all is done. We can even go into the operation if you want, go to settings, and we can double check right there also. We can go to altitudes. Apparently it didn't get it there. Let's go here and let's call that three. But you get the idea. You have the ability to quickly and effortlessly make these changes and these modifications throughout the Top Solid platform. The next thing that I'd like to do is I would like to create some G-code and then I'm gonna create some setup sheets. But we'll do that in the next video.